Hello, this is Bob Hollis with the Mobius Network and a quick video tutorial on how to use uh, RS Form Pro. So we wanted to make a uh, an app online application for the Green Spirit Award and uh, right now we have this set up so that uh, our application is only visible to logged in admins uh, for testing purposes. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. Okay, I just paused momentarily and, and logged in to uh, keep my username and identity uh, uh, to, uh, private. But now that we're here at, at uh, Green Spirit Award and Green Spirit Award application will now show, so I can click here. And this pulls up our RS form. So I'll show you what it looks like on the front end here and then how we did it in the back end. So we've just got a place for name, email, this is the subject in case the form are going to be used as a contact form. Uh, that could probably be eliminated from this one, however. And then we're asking for name of organization, when did program start, uh, brief description, details of this recycling program. And you can see the different criteria here. These were done as uh, text boxes so that people can uh, type in or copy and paste in text and they can all be, also be expanded out uh, like this as much as is needed to enter whatever information is needed to be gathered. And then there's a CAPTCHA down here, but we've got it set up to be pretty easy to read. You know, for me, CAPTCHAs are like bike locks. Uh, the point is having one. You don't have to have the very best. You need to have one as a deterrent. And uh, same with CAPTCHA. There's nothing more frustrating than needing to fill out a CAPTCHA three or four times because no matter how long I stare at it, I can't figure out what it says. So uh, keeping just a few digits without too much offset uh, really helps. So then uh, we use the CAPTCHA, submit the application, and then that will take us, in, uh, put that information in the back end. So then if I were to log in on the admin side to see how this all works, I would you know, come to my control panel in Joomla, now we're doing this on Joomla 2.5.6. And then I could just go to Components and RS Form Pro. Well, normally, I, I'm just showing you what you'd normally see when you come in on a, a Joomla site, the quick icons here. Uh, but really, what you're looking for is Components, RS Form Pro. And then once you know what you're doing, you can go into any of these. Uh, configuration is pretty straightforward. If you take a look at that, uh, there's not much to it. The most important part to know is how to manage forms. So we're going to go straight to managing forms. And you can see there are a couple of examples here that you can look at to get started. Here's the one we just looked at on the front end. So if I were to open that to take a look at it from back here, you can see how all of those fields look. If I wanted to edit a field, let's say, for example, this recycling program details field, then I would just click right here to edit, and that's going to give me a few different options for the field. Uh, these are my general options, and you can see how those show up on the front page. Your caption is what really is the description you want to put near the input field. Validations. Is this a required field, uh, or is there any type of rule that it needs to fit a certain type of format that you can see listed here? And then here you can put in validation message. So if somebody left this field empty and hit submit, they'll get a message back saying, please describe the details of your recycling program. And they'll know what they need to do to complete the application process. And then attributes. These are the uh, attributes of the field. And so for these fields where people will be putting in a lot of text, I set it at 80 columns and five rows. Um, and no WYSIWYG editor, and the reason is uh, when WYSIWYG editors, you know, the little options that allow you to bold things and italicize, etc., uh, WYSIWYG options can be dangerous to the site. They allow people to insert like HTML code and, and different snippets of uh, scripts that can then be used to either hack or do an iframe uh, injection, various types of attacks. So your site is, is generally safer not using a WYSIWYG on the front end. So that's uh, pretty much it for that. And I'll go ahead and close that back out. There's nothing we need to change there. You can change ordering by clicking on the little uh, blue arrows here, white arrows and blue circles, to move things up and down in terms of where you want to see them. 
determine whether or not things are published, whether or not it's required is, is set up on the, uh, you know, in the attributes and validation section for each of the fields, each of the elements. And then if there's a validation rule, so for example, for email, we put a validation rule that it must be an email address. So if somebody types something in that doesn't fit the format of an email address, it will get kicked back. And then, of course, we've got our CAPTCHA and then a button just for submitting an application. Now, if I wanted to add something new, let's say I wanted to add a uh, checkbox group. I would just click here, and I'm just going to call this Demo Checkbox Group. And then I could put whatever I wanted my caption to be. Uh, validations, again, attributes, how I want them laid out, and that's uh, how you would proceed with that. So that's how you would add a new field, and then once you do add them, uh, for example, this is one that actually might be useful, let's say file upload. So suppose in addition to having people uh, submit their information by copying and pasting text or typing text into each of the submission fields, I can also offer them an option to upload a file and then upload a text or PDF document. Then I'll just put optional. Um, that may make things easier for everybody. So that's, uh, we're going to make it not required, of course. And then uh, attributes, we can put a, a file size limit. And um, let's see, I'm going to put a file size limit on this of uh, 50 megabyte for now. Oh, and they want this in kilobyte, I see. So we'll put 5,000 kilobyte. And accepted files, uh, so we can put .txt .doc. Oops. And maybe .pdf, and that way we don't have to worry too much about uh, other types of files being uploaded. And uh, why not do uh, Open Office as well? So .odt, Open Office document text, um, and that's that should do it. So then you can attach the file. You can also do additional things here. As you can see, that's uh, pretty straightforward. All right, so that's going to pop in down here now at the bottom. And uh, we would want to move that up probably to above the CAPTCHA. So I'm just going to click a couple of little arrows here and slide that up. And now we have added an upload file option uh, to our form. So that's it. And then once that's done, I can just save and close. And if I go back out now to the front end and reload my page, we can see the change that we made. And now there's an option for browsing and uploading a document uh, to go along with this, which uh, can, can be useful. So then how do you retrieve this information, especially if we didn't add the uh, submit a document option? If I go back to my backend administration area and I go to manage submissions, you'll see here that these fields replicate each of the field names for the front end of our form. Now I can also choose which of those fields to show. So for example, uh, I haven't completed this form, but if I did, the information would be showing here in rows. And I could say, well, for example, out of all the rows we have, I don't need to see the submit application or CAPTCHA, but yeah, I do want to see upload file. So I know whether or not there's an attachment there. And I submit to save. And now you can see the upload file has been added. Now once I get some data in here, this might be squeezed and a little tight packed for space. So I could probably get rid of things like IP address, user ID, language code, um, subject is probably unnecessary. So all I would need to do is go in here and again say, well, I don't really need to know the IP address. I don't need to know the user ID. I don't need in the language or a subject. Uh, we already know that from the form. So now I'm going to give myself a little more space 
so when these things do fill up, uh, it, it's used more efficiently. That's pretty much it. If you have any questions, contact Bob at themobiusnetwork.com.